So let's look at unshielded twisted pair. Unshielded twisted pair, we're going to run in a star configuration, just the same uh, design pattern that uh, we have talked about. Uh, it's going to run from the network rack location to individual outlets in offices or labs. We recommend you run at least two cables, and actually we recommend four if you can afford it. And I will talk a little bit about wireless here in a second, and you will see that uh, four might be the right thing to do for a number of uh, cases. You also want to run network cables between the network racks from where you have the fiber come into your building, from that main rack up to every other network rack location. And again, we recommend uh, using four to six cables. The reason we do this is because uh, it's often cheaper to run things on copper than it is on fiber. You certainly will be running fiber between the network racks, but uh, having copper in there, it just allows you to save some money. The real question as you look at unshielded twisted pair is what kind of cable should you run? I've built this little table here. It has the cable type and uh, how fast it'll go for how far. And it has this thing called cost factor. Uh, the cost factor, if it says 1x, it means it's the same price. If it's 1.2, it means it's 120% uh, of the cost. So rather than being, you know, $100 to run it, it's $120. And then uh, 1.4 would be $140. Uh, and again, this is going to depend on your cost of labor in particular. Uh, materials uh, aren't that much more expensive, but uh, in the U.S., labor is a key factor. And so you'll, you'll have to develop uh, what the cost factor is for your region. Uh, so category five cable will support 100 megabits for 100 meters. Uh, I will point out that much of the category five cable that we see installed actually meets category five E performance specifications. So you might certainly be able to run gigabit for 100 meters. So cat five E will support gig and two and a half gig. Category six will support uh, five gig. For uh, 100 meters, it will support 10 gig for a shorter distance of 55 meters. And then if you want to support uh, 10 gig for a full 100 meters, uh, we recommend the CAT 6A cable. If you notice in that previous table, we were talking about speeds and cable type. This table looks at the standard that you know, a switch will implement and what type of cable uh, is required to support that standard. So 100 megabits, the standard name is, uh, it's an 802.3 ethernet standard. It's 100 base TX is what that's called. Uh, gigabit is 1000 base T. And gigabit requires a category 5E cable to support the full distance. Again, uh, some category 5 cable is actually will meet the performance specifications and might well support these speeds for a limited distance. You probably aren't that familiar with the 2.5G base T and the 5G base T. These are wireless standards that were developed as uh, Wi-Fi access points, uh, became faster, the Wi-Fi part became faster, starting with uh, 802.11ac you really needed to provide more than one gigabit to an access point to take advantage of the wireless speeds. And so 2.5G base T and 5G base T were introduced. We would also note that a minimally compliant category 5E is a 100 megahertz cable, uh, but many uh, category 5 installations utilize a 200 or even a 350 megahertz cable, so the CAT 5E will support the 5G base T. As we look at 10G base T, uh, it requires category 6A cable to support the full 100 meters. However, uh, CAT 6 cable will support uh, 10G base T for a limited distance. Let's talk for a minute about twisted pair and wireless. Uh, we've run into any number of people that say, hey, I don't need to do wiring, we're just gonna do wireless. However, for good wireless performance, you must provide wiring to each access point. You don't want to use mesh networking to backhaul from wireless access point to wireless access point, finally back to the wiring closet. 
you really, really want to use cabling out to each access point. These wireless standards are moving at a breakneck speed in terms of the type of speeds you can get, and uh, you need better cabling to support these faster speeds. Let's take just a really quick look at the wireless standards. We ought to be really familiar with 802.11n. That's a standard that's been around forever and a day. It runs on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It'll support uh, 576 megabits at full rate. And uh, you can support those access points with CAT5e or CAT6 because you need uh, a gigabit to the access point. If you look at the next generation, which is what you probably or hopefully have installed, it uh, is 802.11ac. It actually can support almost seven gigabits, uh, and that is going to require CAT 6a cabling. The next generation of wireless, which is being dubbed Wi-Fi 6, prior to 802.11ax, people never talked about Wi-Fi 4 or Wi-Fi 5, but for some reason with 802.11ax, they've introduced Wi-Fi 6 as a term, and uh, it will be running in the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, spectrum. There is a 6E standard, Wi-Fi 6E standard, that will also support 6 gigahertz as a frequency. That runs at almost 10 gigs. So uh, you are going to have to have a CAT 6A cabling to support uh, that kind of speed. And then finally, there's a new standard that's coming. I mean, 802.11ax is available. You can buy it. Uh, that is what we recommend that you buy now if you're buying new access points. But there is a new standard coming. It's called 802.11be. It's going to be probably be called Wi-Fi 7. It will definitely support the 6 gigahertz spectrum in addition to the legacy spectrum. And it will be faster than 10 gigabits. So, to support an access point that is 802.11be or Wi-Fi 7, you're going to have to have two CAT 6A cables to serve that access point to take advantage of the wireless spectrum that it's using. Note that as you move to the 6 gigahertz spectrum, your access points are going to have to be closer together than they are, particularly in the 2.4 gigahertz uh, and 5 gigahertz range because the signals won't go as far. 6 gigahertz is not going to go as far. So we actually recommend that you run four Category 6A cables to each access point location today. So that will support your 802.11ax installation, your Wi-Fi 6 installation. As you move to 802.11be, you have four cables there and you can simply drag those cables that extra 30 feet or so, or even use a 30-foot patch cord uh, to reach the additional access point that you're going to need to place to have complete coverage in the 6 gigahertz range.